Let's take a closer look at the first WEC race in 2024, which was also the first WEC race to be won by an LMDH car. And not just that, Porsche secured the first three places with their 963 LMDH car. So where were all the others and how did the newcomers do? First of all, for this generation of sports cars we have to understand the BOP rating for the individual events. And to do that we need to remember what happened last year. Last year Toyota won all WEC races, except Le Mans. The legendary 24 hour race was won by Ferrari. And the Ferrari was a very competitive LMH car, which was very strong especially on long straights and higher speeds. With this in mind we take a look at the Qatar BOP rating. For this we concentrate on weight and power. First of all, the Toyota got by far the highest weight and the regulators even increased the maximum possible weight of the car to now 1100 kg overall. The Toyota got 1089 kg which is well above last year's maximum weight. With a power of 693 horsepower we get a ratio of 1.571 kg per horsepower. For the Ferrari they reduced the power so it will be less competitive at high speeds and they reduced the weight accordingly to get around the same ratio as the Toyota. So both of last year's race winners have by far the worst rating of 1.57 kg per horsepower. And we have to say that these BOP ratings are worked out with lap time simulations. So the regulators can vary different factors and see how they influence the car's lap time. To be sure to not get a big surprise with the new Isotta LMH car, they gave them the second highest weight with 1085 kg, but allowed them more power for a better ratio overall. Then we have newcomer Alpine and BMW with a very similar rating. Cadillac, Lamborghini and Porsche form the next group. We have seen great battles between Cadillac and Porsche in the past, so their rating is very similar. And it looks like newcomer Lamborghini, which is a LMDH car like the Alpine, should have gotten a good start. Although we have to keep in mind that they had slightly less hybrid energy for each stint than Alpine. Since the Cadillac is the only naturally aspirated car, they cannot turn the engine up like other turbocharged cars. So the Cadillac gets close to the minimum weight limit and that gives 1.52 kg per horsepower. Porsche and Lambo are matched to that, so there can be a good battle. And suddenly the wingless Peugeot was very competitive. We can see the reason for that in the BOP rating. It was running the lowest weight and the most power. Additionally, the track in Qatar is very even, which is good for cars which rely mostly on downforce from the floor. So that could have been the story of the race. But one Peugeot had a spin in the first turn, had to drive with a flat spot until he could pit, got battery problems halfway of the race and then they were just collecting data until the end. The other Peugeot on the other hand could have reached second position if it hadn't run out of fuel just before the finish. It crossed the finish line in electric mode but was disqualified later on because they are only allowed to use the electric motor from 150 km per hour. By the way, other LMH cars were only allowed to use it from 190 km per hour. Another advantage for Peugeot. Not being able to drive to Parc Fermi by itself was another reason to disqualify the Peugeot. So unfortunately it did not work out. And for the next race the Evo version with rear wing will come. Check out my other video for more on that. What did work out was Porsche's race. They locked out the podium one lap ahead of everyone else. And they also won the LMGT3 class. So a very good weekend for them. The 963 solved its reliability issues and became a very competitive hypercar, even without BOP. The Cadillac is a well-proven hypercar now too and reached 4th place behind the Porsches. Toyota unsurprisingly couldn't keep up, rules don't allow to criticize BOP publicly. But they also made a few mistakes like an airgun problem during a pit stop. In the end they could only reach 6th and 9th position. The Isotta, unsurprisingly with this BOP rating in mind, couldn't keep up. At the same time, they are a new and small team with many small issues and unexperienced drivers. They had to stop the race with suspension failure. The Lamborghini didn't have the pace yet, but it was their first race and reliability was important for them. 
Now they collected a lot of data and because of their performance in Qatar, they might get a better BOP rating in the future. The works Ferraris were suffering a lot under the BOP rating, but they also made a couple of mistakes and ran into penalties. But their yellow customer team could outpace them and reached 5th place. The BMW, now run by the experienced WRT team, had a clean race without reliability issues or mistakes. But the car is simply lacking pace. They reached 11th and 15th position, 3 and 8 laps behind the leaders. Relative to that, Alpine's performance as a newcomer, with a very similar BOP, was not too bad. They reached positions 8 and 12. So unfortunately, we now always have to check the BOP rating for each race first, before we talk about the result. Advantage is that we get close racing for small budgets, so we have a lot of manufacturers joining the sport. So what do you think? Did you enjoy the first WC race in 2024? Who's your favorite? And is BOP the right strategy for the future? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.